Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest because he's just so great. He is a land geeker and now an author. I'm just so excited. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The professor, the brain, the flight school, land geek Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, and now a new program. It's the Netflix of everything digital that you'd want to learn in your life. Scott Todd, tell us about your newest and latest and greatest invention. Oh man, it's the, it, it is heavy lifting. It is InvestorNinjas.com. InvestorNinjas.com, go there. There's a, cool, there's a lot of cool things. One, as Mark said, it is the, we're, we're, we're working to make this the, the Netflix model for your training. Really your soft skills. You know, like, you know, our guest today, who I'm really excited to have, he's gonna, he, he's got, he's dead, dead on with something he, he told me before the show, which is really about a lack of knowledge. There's not a lack of knowledge out there. What it comes down to is maybe a lack of some of the soft skills, and that's really where Investor Ninjas comes in, is to help you focus on some of those soft skills that you need. So go check it out. You can join us for free, InvestorNinjas.com forward slash free. It's a great community there for all of the real estate investors out there. Help me spread the word. I want real estate investors. I want a boatload of them. I want people just like you to make the world a better place. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. We, we can all agree knowledge is power and to go to one platform one trusted platform that's phenomenal so check out investorninjas.com today's podcast is sponsored by flight school so you don't want to go up that land geek mountain all alone have that sherpa scott todd he's done over 200 deals leading you up you can do it live over three days or you can do it virtually with him over 14 weeks schedule a call with the zen master mike zeno or the nightcap meister Scott Bossman, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Today's guest is a former land geeker, land geek client, Victor Reynolds. If you don't know about Victor, he is just a phenomenal guy, former athlete. And now I, I guess he's, he's kind of like a, a cross between Tony, Ro if Tony Robbins and say, uh, Kevin Durant had like a love child. You'd have Victor D. Reynolds with his latest book, Get Off the Bench. Victor Reynolds, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. I also appreciate the introduction. That was actually pretty good. So, Victor, we were talking before the, the podcast about your powerful why. Why write the book, Get Off the Bench? Well, Mark, I've um, since doing land investing, I've you know met a lot of other land geekers, and I've also told others about the land investing model. I've also branched out a bit to help myself sell a little bit more land, and when I've done that, I ran to a lot of people who are looking to make money online in various ways. Now, they always say, "I don't have money to do this. I don't know if I can do that," and I, I get it. But the information to do all the things that we need to do you know, to make money, be it investing in land or drop shipping or affiliate marketing or what have you, it's all out there. You can easily purchase it. Or if you're really resourceful enough, you can put it together for free. But the reason why people don't succeed is not because they don't know what to do is they don't have the belief that they can do it. They don't have the confidence or the mindset or the, the habits that you need to daily take action. Mark, one of your favorite words is Kaizen, right? A lot of people don't have that ability to take those small continuous steps. Um, and that's what the book is all about. Scott Todd, I know your next question. But which go is, ahead. What's my next which question? Is, which is, well, how, how do you take somebody with that doubt, with that fear, with that uncertainty and get them off the freaking bench? Well, that's a good question. I, I wasn't going to go there yet, but uh, I think it's a good question. I, I was, I was going to say like that, that is, uh, that, that is definitely a, um, a key, a key part is the, the mindset issue, right? Like it's, if people can get out of their own way 
and just like shut that little voice in their head up, man, it is amazing what you can do. The problem is, is that, um, the, the problem is, is that we don't have a lot of self-confidence because we, we've never, um, we've never, I guess we've never been pushed to, to think and to, to go right. So like, everybody is taught, go get a job, go get a college degree or go get a job and stay there for the rest of your life. And like when people do it, yeah, I've, like I've seen so many people go down that path. They, they get to the end of their life. You know, they've got like five years to retirement and guess what? The company comes in and says, you're not needed anymore. They had five years to go, man. What the heck? And that's not fair. And so all of a sudden everything, you just see the, the cracks in the whole thing. And then it's all it's it's the fact is is that you accepted the wrong the wrong story and so i'd like to know now how uh victor can move move you off the bench it's victor, a great question how do, off, um, how do we get off and, the bench and i'll tell you what in high school i was that kid on the bench i was like a scrub of my high school <laughs> basketball team and i i desperately wanted to get off the bench i've, I've been both the scrub and the the starter so i i get it um, and in the book, I kind of talk about that a bit because of my athletic background. I do bring in some of that to help bridge the gap. But in reality, what anybody needs is the confidence to go forward. And how do you get confidence? Well, that's the million dollar question. In reality, all it is is experience and integrity. Um, there's no other way to really build confidence uh, because what we have, what happens oftentimes is what Scott kind of alluded to is Basically, society tells us how to live our life. And for the most part, we don't question it, especially since that information doesn't necessarily come from some, you know, some mountain upon high. It's from our friends, our family, people who actually love us and want us to do well. However, because they were never able to accomplish their dreams and do the things they want to do, they make sure, be it intentionally or unintentionally, to that you won't be able to accomplish your dreams either. So they tell you things, not out of fear, not out of anger, but well, more out of fear uh, instead of anger to make sure that, hey, I was hurt trying to do something against the grain and I don't want you to have that same pain. So what I talk about in the book is first off, to understand how to get that confidence, you have to understand what is actually holding you back. So I go through different things of the different mindsets that we have, that we have developed, um, that and the mindset we have about money in general. Um, and then once we understand that groundwork and how we learn things, like you may not understand this, but between the age of zero and 18 is we form 95% of our hardcore programming in our mind. So basically anytime something happens in our, in our life after the age of 18, a lot of that, uh, your responses are kind of pre-programmed just from your upbringing. And we all know as kids, we don't necessarily make the smartest decisions or do the right thing. So we're basing a lot of that of our, our adult decisions on things we've done or things that happened to us as children. So once we break that down, we can understand that, okay, there is a way to reprogram that. Once that happens, then you can start to implement the different things that you need to do to build confidence. So one of the things that I alluded to earlier is Kaizen, the continuous uh, improvement. But to do that, you have to set little easy things that you can accomplish every day. And when you do that with the proper mindset, the confidence starts to build. Also, that integrity builds because you're saying, hey, I'm going to get something done today. It doesn't have to be something grand or major. It could be something as minor as I'd said I was going to send out an email to my email list or I was going to make sure I call my mother today because I said I would. And you get that done. And that feels good because you're a person of your word at that moment. And if you actually build on that, the confidence comes to do other things. And once you're confident, you can start to make these other bigger goals happen because hopefully as you're working towards it, let's use land investing, for example, you're getting, I don't know, hundred offer letters out a day, so to speak. And as you do that every day, you're like, it's not that bad. I'm starting to get a routine. I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to see the fruits of my labor. And it's hard to not build confidence and the ability to think, Hey, if I can do this, why can't I get on the phone once I get some of these offers back and talk to these prospects and close them on a lower price and, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it keeps going down the line. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious about some of your actionable mind hacks. Can you, okay. give, can you give us an example of some of these actionable mind hacks that can really help us sort of break through any of these doubts, fears, uncertainties 
so that we can start taking massive action and, and moving my, in our lives. Yeah, my personal favorite, um, because there's two ways we like what happens oftentimes in life when things happen, we create a story around it of why this happened. And, you know, maybe in some harsh portion of your life, that's okay to kind of get you through a potentially tough time. But in my personal opinion, those experiences are usually negative and sure they can help you to start to create the different mindset you need to, to move forward. But personally, I like to work out lifting weights. Um, there's been nothing more transformational for me to watch my body transform. Now, most of you people in podcast land can't see, I'm a, I'm a tall, skinny kid. Um, Kevin Durant, that, that description is very accurate. If you don't know who Kevin Durant is, look him up, look up his physique. He is no, not winning, winning a Mr. Universe contest anytime soon. However, it doesn't take much for your confidence to grow watching yourself lift more heavier weights. I'm not saying it's gotta be the heaviest weights, but as you see yourself start to lift a little bit stronger, um, a little bit easier, um, it's hard to not feel better about yourself and what you can do. You can also, what I found out to be really uh, insightful, especially if you're not into doing anything physical, which you really can't succeed if you don't do anything physical, your mind and your body and your soul are all connected. Um, when I just set time to read a little bit every day, I'm not talking about hours and hours and hours, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to read every day, the information and knowledge that you will receive from just from reading kind of changes how you view like your, your business or yourself, depending on what you're reading. Um, that consistency truly helps you uh, what you're doing. Um, those are my two big ones. But um, I, I go into detail in the book why they're important. Not you know, not just you should just do it, but why you should do it as well. Scott Todd. You guys can't hear me, can you? There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to unwrap there. I mean, like in, in what he said, like one of the things that that sticks out to me that that Victor said was the fact that. You know, you've got you've got to add small successes, right? Like everybody's looking to get up to bat and hit a home run. Like we all want these home runs in our days. And at the end of the day, there's not too many days in your life that they're really made up of home runs, right? Like there's not a lot of home runs in your life. Like there are certain days where it's like, man, that that was a boom. That was that was one for the memory books. But most days are gonna be just like normal days. And so if you if you're trying to build your business and you're trying to think like, oh man. I didn't get a home run today. The day was, was terrible. Well, that's not realistic. What's, what is realistic, is, and Victor said this, is I'm going to I'm gonna get one, like I'm going to record, and I did this for a very long time. I still do it. Record your successes for the day. And even if it seems like a stupid little thing, just make notes of where you are. Leave yourself breadcrumbs because when you look back, all of a sudden, the world will change and you're like, holy cow, I didn't see the, the change in here, but the world can in fact, and, and does change over time if you're consistent. You know, one of the things that I struggled with early on in my business was I struggled with getting that buyer's list email out every week, right? Like I just felt like, I felt like slimy, sleazy, that email marker that we all don't like, you know, there's, People are going to see my name again. They're going to go hit the unsubscribe button or they're going to like delete my message or they're not reading my stuff. So you start to have these internal conversations with yourself that are n none of which are, are, are probably the, the reality. And so what? People are going to unsubscribe. Who cares? The thing is, is if you show up every day and, you know, Mark and Victor, one of the things that it took me the, a mindset shift to go do was, I mean, like I would, I would know that I'd have to send this email out. And I would, I would dread it. Okay. Like, Oh man, I'd hate putting it together. And then there was a mindset shift and this is really what it is. It's a mindset shift to say, you know what? I owe it to everyone on this list. Who's given me their email address so that they can, they can learn more about land. I owe it to them to show up and bring them the best deal I have. Right. I owe it to them. Now, all of a sudden it's not about me. It's about service to mankind. And that sounds nutty, but if you can start to shift one little shift, not on you, but on the people that you're serving, now you need to show up. They need to hear you. They need you to solve their problems. They need you in their life. And guess what? If they don't need you in their life, it's okay. 
you've served your purpose, they will unsubscribe and it's like they have now found their next path. And that's all we're here to do is let me help serve you. And then if you want to unsubscribe, it's okay, but I'm going to show up. And I think that that little mindset shift, and that's what Victor talked about. It doesn't have to be these home runs. It needs to be the small little, just get on base one time. Just, mm -hmm. just hit a single, man. Just hit lots of singles. And eventually you're going to hit the home runs. And next thing you know, you're going to hit two home runs in a day. And that's just how success builds on each other. Mm -hmm. The compound effect, that's very true. Um, and one, one, one more thing, Scott Todd. I mean, I know you were in the financial sector before you got into land investing. But like, I think you can agree that a lot of people, as I mentioned before, they do have a real big issue with money itself. And that's why it's, it's tough for people to feel like they need to sell or write that email or basically put money out there because they have a weird relationship with money because of how we treat money like it's some kind of mythical being. It's just a tool to get things done. And when you shift your mindset to one of service, that I'm using this to help myself, my family, and those who come to me with win-win deals, things change. The universe reacts differently to you. People react differently to you. And then again, now you're acting with consistency and integrity and that confidence starts to build and that business acumen starts to build. And as you look at more things, you're like, how else can I learn to serve people? Well, I need to learn email marketing. I need to learn how to write good ad copy. I need to learn how to close on the phone. Um, because once you do those things properly, you are truly serving people because how dare you as you said, Todd, keep your awesome land deals away from someone who needs that land at a price that they can afford. How dare you do that? But when you have the wrong mindset and the wrong mindset about yourself and your value and the value you bring and about money and what may, people may or may not think of money, you're going to stop yourself from doing the great things that you were put on this earth to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm right with you, Todd. That was beautifully said, man. Mark, if you ever want to see a room freak out, Maybe you should do this next boot camp. Like take a hundred dollar bill out of your pocket and just tear it up and watch people freak out because of what Vic, like Victor just said it. We have this, we have this, um, this, we, we treat money like it's like it's gold, like it's up on a pedestal and it, literally like, I, I, I don't want to lose money like anybody else. Right. But like when you can get to the point where you're like, that's a hundred dollars, it's okay. I'll get more. It, it sounds nutty, but like at some point in time, you're like, I'm not going to go chase that down. It's, it is what it is. I'm going to keep moving on. Then, you know, like you have broken the, the bond with money when you're like, I'm not going to fight the, I'm not going to fight that, you know, where before you'd be like, I need that hundred dollars or I need that $20 back. I need you short change me six cents at the grocery store. You're too, you're too, too in love with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so true. And, um, you know, we could do a whole podcast just on people's dysfunctional money mindsets. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I, I'd like to ask Victor, what's some of the worst advice you see given in the area of, you know, trying to build an online business? Hmm, that's a, that's a good question. The worst advice that people do, oh, they tell people to buy. Well, I wouldn't call it, it's bad when it's done at the improper time. So as I said earlier, all the information we can ever want about how to basically do anything is on the internet. And the better information is that you pay for it. Um, and so I guess the worst advice is people thinking that while it is possible to find information for free, to get the complete accurate picture um, trying to do that for free, like jumping around, sacrificing your time to find information that you can easily pay for quickly and you can start to implement and invest right away. So people thinking, you know, basically other people who also don't have any success online or elsewhere, oh yeah, you don't have to pay for that. That's a waste of money. You shouldn't pay for that. You should just, you know, find it for free on some other, somebody's blog or something. And again, Technically, you can do that, but the amount of time you spend on that and the amount of holes in your knowledge that you're going to have and the lack of access to a community that's also going through the same content, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. Another thing that is bad advice is basically any advice from someone who hasn't done the thing that you're trying to do successfully. Um, 
because we, again, we take advice from people who don't know what the heck they're talking about. And again, a lot of that time is from like Uncle Joe or, you know, our brother or somebody that we love and they do care for us. But, you know, I don't take fitness advice from a fat person. I don't care how many books they've read or who told them what, right? I take advice from people like, oh, you've done this before? I would love to listen to your opinion. To someone else, like, unless you've done it, I don't, I don't really care. And so that, that kind of goes with the same, like, hey, try to find everything for free online. You can do it quickly. You can do it on your own. It's not true. No man's an island. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, it always kind of breaks my heart when I get that email from somebody that says, um, hey, I, I'd love to do flight school, but um, I can't afford it, right? And I always want to email back. I never do it. But I always just say, you know, you can't afford not to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like we're, if you can't afford it, like, wh- where's your money going? Like, is there a better investment than yourself? Never. Like, how else are you ever going to be able to afford anything if you can't afford to invest in yourself and make that investment? Exactly. Like, it's like heartbreaking. But I mean, if I mean, not now, when? When are you going to have the money? You don't have it now. So what's going to change in your life that if it's not flight school, that's going to give you the skill and the business acumen to actually earn that money so you can buy or invest in yourself in other ways. A lot of people, they always see it as a cost up front, but they don't think about the long-term investment of what is going to return. Like, okay, sure. If a program costs $10,000, that's a little expensive. Okay, great. But what if that same program will guarantee that you get $10,000 a month for the rest of your life? Would that $10,000 a month be worth it? What would you have to do to get that extra money to pay for that, right? Instead of asking, oh, or saying I can't afford it, the question is, how can I afford it? What can I do to make this happen? Is this that important to me? Or am I so addicted to my struggles and my comfort zone that I don't really want to change? I just want to sound like I want to change because it sounds noble. Yeah, Scott Todd. It's funny because I, I remember I, I, I went through a program once and I think that maybe this kind of builds on, on people's uh, experiences too, right? Because our experience is built on these things. And so I went through a program where, um, where I learned from, from, a, um, from a, a guy who was a developer, a real estate developer on like what it takes to really develop a, a property, like take, take the land and convert it into something else, something that's at a higher usage. And, you know, if you're going to go be a developer, there's a lot of work to be a developer, right? Like you talk about like land, land is like simple and easy. You want to be a developer. Oh boy, you got a lot of work to do. Okay. There's a lot to do there. And so I went through this program. It was a very good program. Very good. And then, you know, part of this program is like, you have to go find a property. You have to find the development. You have to find the, the, the use case for it. And I did all that stuff. And you get to the end of the program and he's like, okay, well, our term is over, but yet you stop the grow because it's, it's, it's more than six months to take something, a project through. And you get to the end of it and you're like, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can go do that or I don't know if I really want to go do that. You get to the end and a lot of times, even though you invested a lot of money into the program, you still have to take action. If it's a change that you really want to make, you have to like, swallow your fear and do the very next step. And I think that's where a lot of times people fall down is on that very next step. Mm-hmm. Okay. They, they do what they're supposed to, but then they got to do one more step to keep going. And they're like, I'm afraid. And that, that being afraid is what stops many people from achieving whatever they want. That just, I'm afraid. And I think that if you can just admit that one thing. I'm afraid. And then now you can step forward. Agreed. Agreed. That's why people like me exist because I will be that person to help nudge you in that right direction or sometimes take you hand in hand be like, look, we're going to take this step together. Now, I only could do that for so far. I can't take you on your own journey, but that is what like the uh, Land Geek community is all about. Helping each other get past that fear and taking that step. Someone gets fired up at, you know, boot camp in, in San Antonio or in Florida or in um, Arizona, and you know, they're fired up for the first two days, and then when they come back home and they get back to reality, that fear comes back. That's when they need to start to tap into people like myself, like Mark, like Scott, like the whole Land Geek community on Facebook to get them past that. And again, a lot of people don't want to admit that they're afraid, you know, for various reasons, but I mean, we're human. 
I get it. Anything new is difficult. Anything new is hard and it's out of our comfort zone. So it's going to take a bit, but you know, people learn to lean on those who have done it, those who are there to support you, those who care about your success. No, it's true. I mean, I, I even hire coaches just to get things done because I know left my own devices, I'll get distracted. It's not like I don't have the knowledge how to do it. It's that if I don't have a coach, you know, setting that time aside with me to make sure and have the accountability that I'll execute, and I don't have any skin in the game. I just won't do it. Like I got a big life. I got three kids. I got a couple companies. Like I just won't. I just know myself. <laughs> so it's like, all right, like let's set a point. Let's set aside this time with this coach to get her done and get it done right and have that extra set of eyes. I mean, there's there's so many so many advantages to having that that coach. You know, there not just to motivate you, but keep you hold you accountable you know, maybe making a little adjustment here and there that can make all the difference. So Victor, here's a question for you. Go for it. What makes a great coach? I know you had a lot of coaches. I did. I did. Who, who was your favorite coach and why? So what makes that person a great coach to you? Okay. Um, so um, I've had two with you, right? Um, Chris Pritchard right. and uh, Tate. Good old Tate. Right. Um, Tate might have been my favorite coach. Um, and I've had others after him that was land investing. And I actually, there's probably a coach I didn't like, to be honest, um, because of all the experience they've given me and the, the knowledge. And basically, they really do shortcut that, that learning curve. Um, so first, your first question, what makes a good coach? I, in, in the book, I have like 13 criteria of what I, I, I personally find um, useful. Um, One is, you know, obviously they have to have done the thing that you're trying to do. They don't have to be world-class at it, but they just got to be better than you are and they can show you what to do. Two, they they hold you accountable. So, you know, they help you figure out, hey, what's the next steps and then make sure that you do it. Three, they're approachable and pretty much doesn't have to be 24-7, but if you have that confidence that when you need them, they'll be there for you, it goes a long way. You know, it's like having a, a tightrope artist having that net underneath. They may not need the net, but knowing that it's underneath them makes them feel a lot better and a lot more confident going forward. Um, sometimes this is, uh, I had this as a bonus, but if they have their own, I guess, digital course, that can help sometimes because you can get to understand things without having to, you know, on your own time at your own speed. Uh, um, that's, again, a bonus. It's not necessary, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Because those 13 points of them. Those are my biggest ones right there, though. The accountability, making sure they're there, um, and that they've done what you're looking to do. And my favorite coach was Tate because he'd done all those things. He understood where I was. He met me where I was. So he didn't try to coach me as if I was somebody else. He understood who I was as a person. He understood what my needs were, what my goals were, and we made a plan together. It wasn't just him lecturing me. We were working as a team, even though I definitely trusted in his expertise and I trust it in his knowledge to help me get to where I want to go because, you know, Tate lives a good life. He rides a little bicycle in the heat of the <laughs> desert. Um, you know, he, he makes good money. He's, a, he's very laid back. I know everybody who's listening to this podcast know who Tate is. You know, if you don't know Tate, you better ask somebody. Um, he's hot in the streets. Um, but that's, he's a good coach because of those reasons, because he helped me be the best me I can be. He didn't help me become Tate or anybody else. All right. I love it. I love it. Well, Victor, your mentorship has been great this, uh, this podcast, but now we're going to put you on the spot one more time, extract one last bit of wisdom, your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, obviously I'm going to pitch my own book. It's called Get Off the Bench, The Secret Success Playbook to Maximizing Your Internet Business from the Coach You've Always Needed. You can get it right now on Amazon. Uh, paperback version is $14.99, but I currently have the Kindle version for $0.99. Cents. Um, I'm just asking that people check it out, look at it, enjoy it. Um, I put my heart and soul into this book, and hopefully that comes through in the text. And um, let's see, another resource. I'm going to be... I'm gonna be uh, kind of off the beaten path a little bit, but it's a little, little on the nose as well. Google. Again, all the information you need is out there. 
It is there. It is, it is searchable. You can find it. And I, coming from me to you, podcast listener, I believe that you can do this. Whatever that you're trying to do, I believe you can do it. You already have the ability. You may not have all the knowledge, but you have enough to take that first step. So any technical knowledge you may need, Google will show you the way. Um, but if you need more than that, check out my book. It will definitely help you, inspire you. Awesome. Awesome. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I, I'd like to just kind of reiterate something I said. Okay. Like, um, I don't know if people, people picked up on this or not. And I'm kind of pulling a Mike Zano where I can just quote myself here. So I'm just going to go ahead and quote myself again. But look, I want you to think about, I want you to take some time and this is not going to take a lot of time, but I want you to write down on a piece of paper, like literally write down on a piece of paper in your business. Who are you serving and why? Like write that down. Who are you serving and why? And you're, you're not serving your family. You're serving people that need land or you're serving people that need what you're selling, whatever you're selling, people need it. Okay. And if you truly believe that they need it, then you have a responsibility and a fiduciary responsibility, a fiduciary duty to serve that market and to show up every single day to solve their problem. Remember, they may not know who you are when they wake up today, but it's your job. You are on a mission to serve that person or that type of person. And when you take that in, you won't apologize you won't apologize for your marketing. You won't apologize for your sales. You will show up and you will make the world a better place from your heart and not just from, from the concerns about your pocketbook. The pocketbook will follow the heart, okay? So go do that. Write out on a piece of paper who you're serving and why and then show up every single day. You owe it to them. Yeah, I, I, I really like that. Now, I only, only amendment I make might make on that Scott is that they don't do they need it or do they want it because what we need like we don't really need a whole lot to survive but but 99.9% .9 of the things we have in our life is what we want and people want an asset that lasts forever people want to feel like they have a place to maybe bug out to people want the idea of something that's idyllic for their family to go out and have that clean, fresh air, unplug. People will like the idea of having 40 acres that they just makes them feel good and go to their banker and say, hey, look, my net worth just went up because I own this 40 acres. So yeah, I mean, does anybody need raw land? Probably not. But if you look at your life, again, 99.9% .9 of what we have, we don't need. I could live on beans and rice, right? But, uh, well, you know. I we say There's that no way I want to live on beans and rice. <laughs> I always say that people buy things that they that they that they feel that they need to solve some problem, real or perceived. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether they need it or they want it, they don't. You don't buy something unless you actually feel like it's going to solve some problem for you. Go solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And so, my tip of the week is get yourself a damn coach. Go to victordreynolds.com. Get off the bench, get motivated, get accountable, and learn more there. And um, I have a, a link to the website, victordreynolds.com. And look, he's been uh, well-trained, been through the, the Langy coaching program. So Trained by the best. Um, there you go. There you go. Um, anyways, Victor, are we good? I, th I think we're good. Um, I appreciate your time. And everybody, I just want to let, let you guys know, Mark is the godfather of land. Without him, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I truly appreciate him, who he's been, who he's been to me, what he has done for me and my family. Um, I really can't express like who he's been in my life. So um, if you guys are under like his tutelage right now, cherish every moment of it. Every word he said is worth his weight in gold, even though words don't really weigh much physically, but you, you get what I'm saying. But um, I'm, I'm just, yeah, you guys are learning from the best right now. So. As you guys are listening to this, soak up his words, write them down, take a picture, you know, save it on your computer, whatever, because the, this, this, this man, is, he gives his heart every single time. And it's, if you listen to his words and you take it in, it will definitely enrich your life financially and in other ways as well. Man, thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate those, those sentiments. I really do. 
that's you know that's why i i wake up every day is, is to, to try to make that impact and um i really appreciate it mm-hmm. um i also want to just remind the listeners that the only way the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a victor d reynolds from victordreynolds.com is if you do the three things you got to subscribe you got to rate you got to review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at the landgeek.com we're going to send you for free the 97 dollars passive income launch kit all right guys you know what's coming up we're doing this you are one two three let Freedom, Freedom ring. ring. <laughs> <laughs> Victor's like, oh man, it's 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 way easier in in, in person at boot camp, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is a little little different. It was very forced, but we were all at the same time, just very slow. It's very slow. It's very tough. By the way, Victor, um, I think you owe me some money because. I believe that we may have bet the Golden State. You said they were going to have a gentleman sweep every round. They went six with the Clippers. <laughs> they went six with the Rockets. There's no gentleman sweep. And now that Durant is out, oh, are they going to go seven with the Blazers? I still think they'll win that series. No, I don't think they'll go seven. Um, I, I do expect them to go five, but it's probably going to be six every other game. But damn, uh, I was hoping you forgot about that. That's all right. I don't even think I, I don't even know what we bet, but I, I remember you saying that. I'm uh, like, I'm gonna I'm fly out to Scottsdale, and uh, buy you lunch. How's that? Fair. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. If if uh, Milwaukee sees them in the finals, are you scared? No. Toronto. Oh, even oh oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, for all of you NBA fans out there, um, you know what we're talking about. If you're not an NBA fan, then you probably don't, and that's okay. All right. So like, um, you guys need to do less basketball and more working. Now get to work. Go serve your people. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. Everybody needs you guys. They need you guys, so go be there for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Kaizen, let freedom ring. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>